This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program in America that you, the viewer, can voice your opinion on the child welfare system. I'm Dennis Lawrence, and beside me is Maria Malin. Today it is my pleasure to bring to you on this episode of Silent Voices a woman named Lisa Smith. Now Lisa has been through a lot with the family court system and she came to tell her story of what she has been through. Thank you so much Lisa for joining us on Skype. We appreciate those of you who are willing to share your story with us even if you are in another state or too far away to come and film. Um, Lisa Smith, welcome to the show. Lisa, can you share with us your experience with family court system? Um, my first experience with family court um, was uh, I was getting divorced um, and I had left an abusive situation. Uh, me and the kids did. Um, and I had a hard time finding an attorney, didn't have a lot of money, and um, legal aid um, had turned me down four times. So with that, I, I did find an attorney that took a, a small retainer. Um, however, when we got into court, um, I thought, that this system was going to help me and what I learned through a very lengthy um, four-day hearing was that uh, there was not going to be any help for me and my children. So um, that began in 2008 um, been in and out of family court for approximately five years. Uh, At that I time, was, you had been in and out of court for five years? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and still in court, um, I am getting ready to go back to court for, uh, custody of my, of my daughter. So, um, it, it was, uh, it was, I would say one of the worst experiences I've ever had in my life. Um, because my perception of family court was that I was going to get the help for me and my kids that was needed and it didn't happen. So it was pretty devastating. Um, I, was on, I was on the stand for four hours being drilled by uh, my ex's attorney, and my attorney didn't do anything at all. Didn't object to anything. He, um, so it was kind of, it, it was pretty traumatic. That definitely sounds traumatic. And what was taking place during the time that you had custody for them five years? Um, yes, uh, in 2000, 
2010, I was awarded custody, primary physical custody of uh, the children, um, which are twins. Um, I have four children. Uh, the last two were my exes uh, with myself. And um, it was, he was fighting me for custody. He wanted the 50-50 thing. And with, uh, with the abuse that it had happened in the marriage and uh, it continuing after I had left with the children, um, I, I wasn't willing to, to do that. However, he was still fighting me for it. Okay, Lisa, just one quick question. Do you, do you have documented abuse in that relationship, and was he ever arrested for domestic violence? He was not. Um, I believe, and I, I will be very blunt about this, one of my biggest um, mistakes that I made was I feel instead of calling the DHS system, which is the Department of Human Services, in uh, Iowa, um, every time there was an incident, I should have been calling the police because then I would have had a paper trail of things that were happening. Instead, um, there was uh, a lot of cover-up, I believe. Um, I've tried to get records of things. From the DHS system, uh, they refused to give them to me. Um, so it it was it's been a very lengthy process. Okay, Lisa, just one quick thing. Many moms do not report abuse for fear of retaliation or um, the family court issues that come along with reporting. Many of us have reported, and it made absolutely no difference. We still lost our children, despite the fact that they were convicted abusers. It doesn't seem like that's really a make it or break it issue. Well, that I mean, it, it I it doesn't. It's kind of the lesser of the both evils, you know. I I just don't. I don't understand. I mean, I'm still, you know, um, I'm still fighting, but yet I still do not understand why it happened. Um, I, why abuse is just disregarded in family court. It makes absolutely no sense, and trying to figure it out makes it even worse. <laughs> yeah. Because it doesn't make sense. That's completely true, Lisa. And in light of the Ray Rice abuse that is going on right now, we will see if that makes a difference in cases, cases which children are involved. I don't think they had children together at the time of the abuse. Instances like this come and go. They do not seem to make a real impact or a difference to the children. So the children you have with your ex-husband, it's my understanding that they are twins. And they are a boy and a girl. And can you tell me what their ages are? Um, their ages at this particular time are 16. Um, I don't have um, uh, my son. Um, my daughter uh, is living with me here in Wyoming, um, and I am from Iowa. That is where the case was. However, four years ago, um, in which there is no place in my divorce decree that says that I could not leave the state of Iowa, however, um, the abuse continued with them, and uh, I did report abuse. However, again, the DHS system disregarded it because I said it, 
and he denied it, so it really didn't happen, even though the kids said it happened. Um, my daughter um, was sexually abused by my ex's brother, and she was told that if she told that her uncle would go to prison. She was nine or ten at the time. So um, there was a lot of manipulation going on, and I felt that I had no other choice but to get them out of that environment. So in 2010, as soon as the divorce was fine, the divorce was final in June, and in September I packed up as much as I could get in my car and came to Wyoming. Um, my oldest daughter lives here, and she um, she got me in contact with the, the domestic violence. Uh, people here and I began talking with them and making a safety plan. So um, it was, I just knew that if I did not get them out of the situation, it was not going to get any better. And they were not going to have the life that they are supposed to be kids. And, and this you know, the trauma, my son had tried to commit suicide, had been in the hospital in Iowa, and again, um, it, it was just like it was disregarded, like, no big deal. Um, my daughter, since this, um, when we first came here, uh, she also, it, it was like all this heaviness was on them. And um, it, it was it was very freeing to get out of the situation or away from him. However, that's when it seemed like the pressure was on more so uh, on the children. Um, their emotions started coming out. Uh, more things came out regarding the abuse. Um, and, uh, the first year was a lot of counseling, a lot of counseling. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so all three of us have, had been in counseling for, well, for the first year, it was every week okay. and, uh, sometimes twice a week. Now, did your children ever witness this abuse, be, you know, that your ex-husband, um, when he harmed you? Yes. Yes, they did. Um, Have they ever been back? Uh, you know how they say that the kids, oh, they don't see. Well, there was times that my son had said something, um or said something regarding to his guidance counselor about seeing his dad on top of me. And I didn't even know that he, he saw it. Uh -huh. So, and nothing was done. It was, it was as though, okay, it happened, but, um, you know, he says it happened, but, you know, dad says it didn't, so if there's no proof, then I guess it really didn't happen as far as the system, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes when children get to a safe place, um, if they have experienced post-traumatic stress disorder, it does not come out till they are feeling safe. And that's what it sounds like with your children. Once they are out of the situation, they are free to express it. That is when the nightmares can start and various acting out behaviors. Right, right, and that's exactly what happened. Um, um, actually, my daughter has since been um, diagnosed with PTSD, my 16-year-old daughter. daughter. Um, my son has been diagnosed with Tourette syndrome in <coughs> Iowa before we ever moved here to Wyoming and uh, has since 
since he has been back with his father, has been taken off his meds, which were prescribed, and uh, also um, he no longer goes to counseling, um, and has um, very little contact with me. Um, that 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 first year, he had a lot of freedom. So did Hope to express themselves and um, not have the the fear that they had when we were back in Iowa. Um, there was a beginning of a healing going on. However, then in 2011, um, that all changed. What exactly, Lisa, happened in 2011? Um, well, um, as I, I had mentioned earlier, I had primary physical care of the kids, primary custody, and we had joint custody together. Um, and he had visitation. So that would be However, that would be joint legal custody. Right. Okay. Right. Correct. Um, well, I was unable to get back to a court hearing in uh, the early uh, early 2011. I had written letters to the court asking for a hardship if I could. Uh, um, appear by phone because I had no money starting completely over um, and my car wouldn't make it so I faxed a letter I sent a letter uh, three different times I got no response from the court and uh, so when I didn't show up for that hearing I was uh, there was a warrant for my arrest a bench warrant for my arrest because I didn't show up before. Um, so with that being said, um, it was it was getting even more traumatic. Uh, well, in June of uh, June 21st, the day before the twins' birthday, if they were um, 13, the day before their 13th birthday, their father. Uh, his attorney um, had gone to court and proceeded to, since I was in default, um, get it, an order that was bogus as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. And his father, their father showed up at my door with a police officer and proceeded to say he wanted to see the children. And I said, well, I said, uh, there's a problem with that because if the kids see you, they are going to flip out. And he said, well, I, I want to see them. Well, I told the officer, I said, uh, he has abused the children and they are on, if, if I go up and I wake them up, this is 7.30 in the morning. If I go up and I wake them up, they are going to flip out. Well, the officer uh, said to me, you need to contact GARP, which is the domestic violence shelter. Right. So that's what I did. Uh, we went into the shelter for the weekend. And... I'm thinking that, well, he's, you know, left or whatever. Well, we come back home on that Monday, and my daughter uh, went over to a friend's house. I dropped her off at a friend's house, um, and my son was at home by himself, and we had already talked about a safety plan, you know, don't answer the door, th those different things. Right. And he did exactly what he was supposed to do. And when I got home, there were two police officers with their father at my door. And uh, I, they said, we have, we have an order that says that the children need to go with their father. And I flipped. 
Um, I I was just I I I just I don't even know how to describe the feeling because it was just beyond my comprehension. Um, my son was uh, in my bedroom, underneath my bed. Um, it took the police uh, two hours uh, talking to him and me. Um, I asked for his counselor. I asked for uh, the DFS, that's what they call it here, Child Protective Services. I asked them to call his counselor and DF, DFS. They would not do it. Um, my son was freaking out. I mean, just totally flipping out. Um, and I'm in the other room, and they, they told me that if I did not calm down, that I was going to get arrested. Wow. So, with that being said... <clears throat> Um, I can't, I, I said, I just couldn't believe that it was happening. I, I was so in shock that I just couldn't believe it. Um, I did not ask them to come into my home. They just followed me into the door. So I was not, I, I was between a rock and a hard place at that particular point. Um, now, you stated that it took them two hours to get your son out of the home. What was his response to them saying that he had to go with his father? How did he react to that news? Well, he kept, he kept screaming, I don't want to go with him. He's hurt me. I don't want to go with him. And it, it's like, okay, what? What? point is it okay for a child of 13 years old I mean he if he doesn't want to go then there's a reason why he doesn't want to go I mean if he's saying to the police officer he's hurt me so what you know I, I don't I I still I do not understand how they, you know, they are there to protect us. No, that you just don't do that. <laughs> it sounds as if he may have been re-traumatized by this experience and the situation that was being forced upon him. Oh yes, oh yes, very, very much so. He, he, um, I, I have worked through my own very, uh, I. I have been diagnosed with PTSD, and it has been a very long road. And I know, without a doubt, he's never been able to deal with the, any of this, because I, God only knows really what's been holding him. I've talked to my son ten times in three years. Wow. And I call, I call every Wednesday and every Sunday and leave messages and ask to have, a, have him call me back. I assume that you call him two times a week because that's what was court ordered in your particular case. Well, what, what it says in the court order, and I, I will give you a copy of that, okay. um, is that I am to have supervised visits. Okay. Um, what that looks like, it doesn't really say. It just says supervised visits. So, and I have, I went back to Iowa uh, last year and uh, proceeded to go to the um, visitation place that I had used once before to see him, and I was denied that visit. His father denied that visit saying he did not want to see me. Thank you for watching. We will return next week with the continuation of this episode of Silent Voices with Lisa Smith. Thank you.
If you would like to be a guest on Silent Voices, contact us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrights at gmail.com. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. I want to thank you, the viewers, for watching this week. You can catch us next week, same time, same channel. Until next week, my friends, remember, your, your voice, voice makes, makes the, the difference. difference.